in the desert is that sometimes it's one word <laughs> and then there's you know sometimes a long poem but I'm just going to read the one word and it says alone there comes a time for everyone and it doesn't matter who you are or how much you believe in a rapture but there comes a time for everyone that you'll die or you will see someone die and you will experience death in a real personal it might be tragic way but in some kind of demonstrative way that you have to come with the re you have to come to the reality of whether death is going to affect you or whether death has no hold over you because you see there's a healthy fear of death for us as human beings that causes us to not want to put ourselves in jeopardy though there are extremists that are junkies for excitement that they don't abide in the place that God has given them but they need to exist outside of the limitations that God has placed for our benefit so they want to push that to the extreme to cause adrenaline to flow and to cause some type of feeling as opposed to faith in what God has given us to experience in a real and personal way and so <clears throat> At some point in time in your life, you're going to come face to face with the death of the body, with your own and my own mortality. For me, I came into contact with that within the first five years of my being a Christian. And thank God I did, that I wasn't expected to live through it either. But the reality of knowing you were going to die the day that someone comes to you and says, you have 60 days to live, you have cancer, you have incurable pancreatic cancer, or you have some other disease that you know you're not going to recover from, then you have a choice. Has God brought you into a relationship with himself that you don't fear death, but you planned on passing from this life into eternal life? Or is it just a wild idea or a personal concept you have in your mind? Because the death of a saint is not meant to be a time of sorrow, nor is it a time of rejoicing, but it is a time of transition, of passing from life to life, from going from age to age into a personal contact now with Jesus face to face. And so, that knowledge of you're going to see Jesus may bring fear, possibly, or it may bring joy, I hopefully believe, or it may cause you to recognize that you need to do something about your life because it's ending. And you may try to make up for your life in a quick and short period of time. But when I saw my grandmother die, she had throat cancer and the little time I saw before she died was miserable she wasn't the woman I remembered she was frail bitter angry mad and she lashed out at everything and everyone that she possibly could and even to the day she died you know she was loved by the nurses around her because of her fight her toughness and her honoriness and the fact that she still smoked to her slit in her throat, even though she had cancer, was killing her. To the day she died, she was furious at the world, so to speak, and sarcastic. And I thought, that's not the way I want to die. When I saw my mother-in-law and went to be with her for the last year of her life, and my wife cared for her daily as we lived with her to ease her passing away from this world into the next I brought music tapes to play daily worship tapes and I put them in the room so that you could hear like there used to be people called the death room in people's houses that when you owned a house for the, all of your life you knew that you know when people were going to pass away you wanted a room full of light and full of an ability to take care of them and so 
Yeah, we, we arranged the room and, you know, the flowers were there and she was on a, you know, machine to keep her alive somewhat. And, you know, just when it came time to pass away, she was just on morphine. And I remember watching as she slowly, you know, was not there consciously, but I'm sure spiritually she was. And I don't know if she was saved, I mean, my wife says she was, and I'm confident of that. But I put the music there and I helped my wife support doing and taking care of her and I was there for her and was there for the woman that was dying and as I watched the life ebb from her and as I saw the last moments and even after she died as most people that have seen dying bodies there was lots of you know ugliness to it and lots of gross aftermath and so we cleaned her up you know so that the husband my wife's father-in-law or stepfather would not see that so she, they would just see the woman's body you know and that bothered me it grossed me out it gave me long nights of praying to god that the lord would rapture but more than that that i would not pass away the same way that i had seen other people do and prior to those two experiences when i was told i would die I had prepared for death. I was ready to die. I was ready to go to be with the Lord. I was full of the knowledge that, hey, when you're that sick, there's no way that you could live. And yet I did. But do you realize that the moment you close your eyes that last time, you're alone with no one there, no worship, no praise, no anyone else. Even if someone's holding your hand, you won't feel it. But then slowly you're slipping away from the physical presence of that body to take your spirit to be with God. Because you are going to God, and you'll stand before Him, whether salvation of your soul to the confirmation of your spirit that you are with Jesus and that you have been accepted in His sight for eternity or whether he says to you that depart from me i never knew you you see death is going to bring a reality of life to you and that life is meant to cause you to choose today whether you will serve the lord or whether you will turn away because death is a reality and when no man knows the day or the hour of the lord's return it also means that no man knows the day or the hour with which you are going to die and that fact ought to keep us aware that every day is a good day to die literally because we have that comforter that's in us that assures us that our life is not just something to be lived temporary and to make the best of it that we can but that it's going to be eternally going on and that closing your eyes in physical death is not a tragedy or a travesty but rather a joyful expectation to see Jesus in a comforting and personal way. Because if you don't know that death is part of your life, then you failed in the realization of what Jesus came to do. Because Jesus didn't come to live. He came to die that in his death, it might mean something to someone else. It might be the salvation of the world. So, when you think of death, recognize it's for a purpose and that you too had a life to live for a reason and that you have the determination to make your death accomplish something with your life as you live it today because that will be the culmination the graduation of literally walking into the presence of god either for confirmation or condemnation and the choice is yours to make so today think about your death how do you want to die Really, I did. We're told that lots of people don't plan for their death and they wind up making their families deal with it. But how do you want to die? Have you planned for your death? Jesus did. He looked forward to it. He was anxious for it. He looked agonizingly towards the cross for what it would accomplish. Do you look forward to what your death will accomplish? Do you know what that may do to others in your family? to those you have known? You see, really, the choice of living 
is about how you are dying. And the choice of how you die is your own determination of whether it will be a joyful anticipation or a resignation or a fearful expectation that you're terrified and you just can't admit it today. If you walk with Jesus, you're never alone, even when you're dying, because he's calling you home.